Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss one of the highly debated formula, one of the highly debated concept of mechanical engineering for gate as well as for other exams. Now this is such a formula from which if a question comes and if it is MCQ, then none of your options will match with the answer. If it is NET, then NET mein to everything is fine. Whatever answer you get in NET, put the answer, that's done. There is no confusion. But if it is MCQ or MSQ, you are going to struggle a lot in exam hall. Why? Because your answer will not match the options. And you will think, I have applied the right formula, still it is not matching. You will check again and again and it will frustrate you. So in exam hall, in, this, in those critical, very precious hours of exam, you will waste time and you will get frustrated. So pay attention in next 5-7 minutes, you will understand what is so critical about this formula. This is the formula of bearing characteristic number or Sommerfeld number. Yes, those simple looking formula, you, may, you might be thinking, sir, what is so uh, debatable in that formula? It's so simple straight formula. So let us, let me show you what is the point of debate in this formula. Look at the screenshot here. This is from the lectures, NPTEL lectures of IIT Kharagpur. We all know this analysis by Mackey brothers. We all know that this axis here is mu n by p, which is bearing characteristic number. Here I have just written that in slightly enlarged, uh, zoomed in view because slightly video is slightly blurred itself, right? So you might have some difficulty in reading. So let me read bearing characteristic number mu n by p. Got it? No confusion at all. Now have a look at IIT Delhi's PDF. IIT Delhi is saying that bearing characteristic number is same as Sommerfeld number, which has this formula. So this formula basically belongs to bearing characteristic number as per IIT Delhi. And not just about IITs, let's have a look at this screenshot. What is this screenshot? This and this are two screenshots of the graph from the same book, from the same book, Shigli, but they are of different editions. It's a very renowned, very respected book across industries and academics. It is one of the top books. If you have to pick top two most respected renowned books in design domain, Shigli will be one of them. In fact, Shigli source has been used across many IITs for NPTEL courses. So Shigli in one of their editions is writing mu n by p as bearing characteristic number or simply bearing characteristic. But in their different edition, they have dropped the word bearing characteristic number. They are using mu n by p and we know that bearing modulus is this one. But bearing characteristic number, this word they have dropped. They are not using that here. This brings us to the main part that if a question comes in exam and it is asking you bearing characteristic number, which formula will you use? Will you use this formula mu n by p or you can say this formula which is there in IIT Kharagpur lectures or will you use this formula which is there in IIT Delhi lectures? Contradiction and even if you use any one of them, chances are it may get challenged, right? Because now, if even if you are not knowing, now you are knowing, right? So if you answered this, those who answered mu n by p, they will challenge. And if you answered mu n by p, those who use this, they will challenge. Now, whether challenge will be accepted or not, whether marks will be given to or not, that is not the point of discussion right now. When, while preparing for exam, those are not the things that you need to get into. You need to think that what should you do to have more chances of correct answers, more chances of acceptance of your answer because rest of the things they are not in your control, right? Whether challenge will be accepted or not, what will IITs do in their revised answer key, that's not for you to think, that's not in your hand. In your hand it is that what formula should I use, which one is more accurate. So let me tell that to you in this discussion you will have a clear answer what you need to do in exam. But before that, 
let's have a look at a brief history of these formulae. Now you will be surprised to know that Sommerfeld number came first in 1904. This was given by Arnold Sommerfeld in his very famous paper. He published the paper and in that paper using solution of Reynolds equation, using maths, using theory, using proofs which is all derived he reached upon this formula. So point number one, it was, it came through a published paper, right? And it was theoretically, mathematically given, right? And this was the formula as we already know. Now, on the contrary, Mackey brothers gave this formula, their formula, 25 years after this, in 1929. So what was the need of that? Let's first understand what was the need of another formula. This formula was good enough, well accepted, mathematically derived, no confusion, accurate formula. Problem was implementation. Because in this formula, clearance is a very small number. It is in microns, right? We know it's a very small number. And in that age, in that era, Tolerances in the manufacturing, in the manufacturing of shaft, in the manufacturing of bearings, tolerances were not that tight. Manufacturing process were not modern. We have modern manufacturing processes today. We can have very good control over tolerance. We can make very accurate designs. But at that point of time, tolerances were loose. So it was very difficult to ensure that clearance stays as per this formula. Even measurement and implementation and keeping it consistent across design, it was very difficult before modern manufacturing. So even though it was more accurate, it was very difficult to implement in industries. And hence, industries started using less and less of it. And hence, in books also, this was there, but it never became the industry standard. But this problem was solved 25 years later by Mackey brothers. They did not uh, reach the formula using the Reynolds number solutions, mathematical and theoretical. Rather, they conducted experiments. And we know that when we conduct experiments, we may arrive upon something which you are not proving essentially, but it works. It's empirical formula. That's how empirical formulas come into picture by experiments and sometimes using industries that you see that yeah, by doing this, by keeping this number twice of that number, it generally works. So let's do that. Getting my point, what I'm trying to tell you. So this was, this ex th these were experiments which gave us empirical formula, which was based around mu n by p. Because they said r by c, it's a good number. We have discussed the significance of r by c in the previous lecture that yes, it is a good number. It's useful. This is accurate. But due to the issue of tight tolerances and difficulty with measuring and keeping a small value of clearance, let's remove this. Let's focus only on mu n by p and use our analysis. We are telling you what value to keep for mu n by p to keep a smooth bearing operation. And that worked. That became a lot popular. So popular that industry is starting adapting that and slowly in academics also started coming. So that is why the mainstream books that you will see today, which are available to us for undergraduation, they define this as bearing characteristic number and it has its own significance. But when modern manufacturing came around 1980s and after that, now this was not that difficult. This formula was not that difficult. Why? Because the problem with C was no longer there. We have now modern machines. We can do computer aided designs, right? CNC is there. There's total control over tolerance. So making parts with tight tolerances is easy. Measuring tolerances is easy. So we switched. Industries started switching back to more accurate formula. Don't have any doubt that this is more accurate. This one is more accurate, of course. And this is less accurate, right? This is empirical. And this is not empirical. But problem was something else, which I told you. And when modern manufacturing came, the problem got solved. So industries started shifting to this formula again. 
and slowly slowly books and sources and undergraduate books as well started shifting to Sommerfield number. In fact, some of the books have totally dropped using the word bearing characteristic number. They are not defining that number at all now. Like Norton is one of those books in some of their editions. Again, Norton is very respected, very respected, just like Shigli. They are not even defining bearing characteristic number separately. They have dropped this at all. They are only using Sommerfield number. So since bearing characteristic number, this word was in use, slowly, slowly, the word stayed in use, but the formula changed and this became the formula. That is why you will see in many good sources as well, like in IIT Delhi, they are referring to standard books only, but in many of their sources, they are referring to the same number because this terminology stayed in the picture, BCN, bearing characteristic number. But the value started changing and we switched to more accurate value. Now, you have understood what, ha what happened? You know what is more accurate? Question is, if a gate or any other exam asks you varying characteristic number, which formula will you use? Will you use this formula or this formula? Let me clarify that confusion for you. You observe the question given to you. If the question only has mu, n and p, then there is no point. You use these three. What will you do, right? If mu and p, these three only are given and question is asking you bearing characteristic number. So anyway, you would have done mu n by p only, right? That's what we have discussed and I'm sure whatever course or source you are referring to, by this time, this is the formula that you have written. This is the formula that you are using. There is one issue with the unit of n that I will discuss in few minutes. So then there is no confusion. If mu n by p is given, you use this formula. But suppose question came where in addition to mu n by p, they have also given the radius and clearance. What will you do then? I will recommend you that then you don't use this formula. And then you use the value, the formula of Sommerfield number only. Then you use this formula only. Look, first point, I am telling this only for this question. I am not saying that whatever question you get in GATE or in any other exam, you have to use all the data. No, 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 it's not like that. Every year in GATE, you will find at least one question with redundant data, with superfluous data, with extra additional data, which is not required to solve the question. So I am not saying this for every question of every topic of every subject. It is possible that question gave you some data, two, three data you did not have to use to get the answer. But in this topic, if IITs are making a question to find BCN and they are giving you value of RNC, so most probably, most likely they are using this formula for their answer. So it would be a better idea to use this only. Because later on, yes, you may challenge. I'm sure if a question comes and they give answer as by this, many people will challenge because in some books, even as I showed you in one of the lectures, old lectures of IIT Kharagpur itself, this is written as mu n by p. It will get challenged. But what happens after challenge, that is uncertain, right? They may accept, they may not accept. So that's why as a good starting point, use this enlarged formula of summer field number only if R and C are also given. All right. Now, coming to n, n. n here is in RPS, is in R. P S is in RPS. Here, it stays slightly debatable because it's empirical and there are many versions of mu n by p where n, sometimes it is R RPS, sometimes in RPM because sometimes mu can be in centipoise also, p can be in PSI also. So since it is empirical formula, there are different versions of this. There are different versions of this formula. But I am clarifying that you Finally, that if a question comes where you have to use mu n by p, for this also, if you are using SI units overall, keep this in RPS only. That is a point where some debate can happen, but you can go with what I am telling. For that and only use RPS. So whatever formula you are using, n you keep in RPS and which formula to use. I hope this point gave you enough clarity. Yes, Sommerfield number is more popular. Today, it is more accurate. It is used across industries. 
and gate also almost 99% time has asked somewhere field number only. Gate has not, as far as I can recall, it has not asked specifically a formula for uh, a question on BCN that find out the value of BCN. But it is highly likely that such theoretical or numerical questions can be framed. So you must know this difference in your mind so that if a question comes, you don't waste precious time in exam hall and you don't get frustrated in the exam hall. All the best.